an announcement in St. John. It is uh, everywhere. It's um, National uh, October. It's scouting for food month that the scouts are doing. And the Cub Scouts yesterday handed out flyers in town um, to get food donations for the St. John Food Bank there at the Methodist Church. And if anyone here would like to, if you didn't get a flyer, if you want to contribute some food for the food bank, you can bring it next Sunday. Thank you. Now, are we going to hear from the... Okay. I, I counted up the kids have done 53 songs, <coughs> different songs in church. Oh. And we talked about favorites, and this is Dylan's and my favorite. <laughs>
We ask a blessing on our president of this time, the Lord. Give him wisdom and courage and strength to be able to rule and govern the nation. We ask a blessing for the nation and the cabinet and all who are in authority over us. Bless all leaders everywhere, Lord, and be with each and every one of them. Let them know, let them find Jesus Christ by faith. These are not the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now sing hymn number 452, my faith looks up to you in 452. Not in virtue. 
virtue of our works, but in virtue of His own purpose and the grace which He gave us in Christ Jesus ages ago. And now has manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and teacher. And therefore I suffer as I do. But I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And I am sure that he is able to guard until that day which has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard the truth that has been entrusted to you by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. May the words of my lips and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. There is so much richness in that passage we just read. Each, each line seemed to have a sermon all on its own. I repeated verse 7 because I wanted you to remember we're not given a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power. Amen. A spirit of power through the power of the Holy Ghost who is within us. Amen. Well, I want to, unfortunately, I can only look at uh, one or two verses in that whole passage. Uh, we could preach on that for a whole year. But I want to preach on guarding the treasure. Comes from verse 13. Guarding the treasure. Well, the Apostle Paul, the greatest of all Christians, at least in the Bible, was there sending a letter from prison to his son and encouraging him and encouraging him to pastor the church and teach the truth and tell people about Jesus Christ. Tell people about the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Timothy 1, 3, he said, I urge you, Timothy, to stay on where you are at Ephesus, in order that you may warn and admonish and charge certain individuals not to teach any different doctrine. We've been given this word of God, this gospel, the truth of Jesus Christ. The truth of God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. And that's what we are to guard. That's what we are to teach. Now Paul tells Timothy that he has been entrusted with a treasure. Entrusted with a treasure. Now, let's look it up. To entrust is to place a valued keepsake in another person's possession. So if I have a gold ring or a gold bracelet or have a lot of money and I trust my son or wife or anybody else or one of you, if I entrust you, I give that to you to keep in safety for you. Well, as a minister of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, Timothy had been charged with guarding the treasure entrusted to him. He was to guard it. He was to defend it. He was to protect it. He was to save it with his very life. Well, if it's good for Timothy, a young pastor, who Paul had just set up as pastor of the church of Ephesus, how about you? How about me? Are you prepared to guard the gospel? To defend the gospel? To protect the gospel? And when we hear Paul's call to guard the treasure, we wonder, what is the treasure? And how do we guard this treasure? Well, what is the treasure? If we look back in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, Jesus Christ was speaking, and he said this, The kingdom of heaven is like something precious. 
And the Amplified Bible expands that. Why hidden treasure? Something precious buried in a field which a man found. He found this treasure and hid again. Then in joy, he goes and sells all he has. He sells all he has. Everything he owns, his, all of his possessions. He sells everything he has and buys that field. So here's a man going out in the field. He sees a treasure. And he says, wow, this is so bad. What I have is not worth what is here. So he goes out and he sells everything he has, sells out his whole life, all his possessions, sells everything he had, everything he owns, everything mom owns, everything dad owns, he sells it all. He comes and he buys the whole field. And he collects that treasure for himself. Jesus Christ says the kingdom of God is this great treasure of life. It is the pearl worth any price paid to receive it. Today we pay little or nothing to receive the kingdom of heaven. We just have little problems like, you know, we get up and we look in the cupboard and we say, well, who should I wear? Dress number one, dress number ten, dress number twenty. Well, you know, and that's a big problem for us, you know. And, we just have to, oh, should I go to church today? However, in Iran, there's a pastor right now in a prison, suffering, being beaten, bruised, everything for the name of Jesus Christ. That's what he's paying for his Christianity. And do you know he can walk out of that prison any day if he just bows down to their little deed. Any day he can walk out. He was so sick the other day and the, the world's putting pressure on them. They brought him out to the Iranian hospital. And when they got there, all the doctors were out. So he got there as the world required them to take this doctor to the hospital. But there were no doctors on call that day. So they took him back without medication. What a price! Last week in Nigeria, in a college, those same folks believing in that, that same demon went into that college that had no defenses, <coughs> killed 50 students, and we don't know how many others were wounded. And they're there because they're Christians. The college students were Christians. They were there, they were killed, they were shot, and they're standing up for Christianity. What is it costing us to be Christians? In Syria, in Egypt, Christians are being crucified. They're being killed all in the name of the precious Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a price others have to pay for their Christianity. The gospel is a treasure because it has the power to save. It, it brings life. It, it offers immortality. It's the only place where we can move from rags to riches. I know it's hard to be crucified today. I know it's hard to be shot and killed today. But one thing we know is that those Poor folks who are enduring all of that are moving from mortality to immortality. And they're moving where they will see the Savior, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, face to face. And I know we're left behind and we're saying we're so sorry for those 50 students who were killed and the others who were wounded. But you know those 50 students are there. And I'm sure Jesus Christ is saying to them, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come on in and take your rest. And Paul says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. 
For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone, to everyone who believes. My friends, we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And he will take us from rags to riches. He will take care of our needs. He will bless us. He will use us in his service. And somehow I don't know how these atrocities are taking place every day in some part of the world are going to be working out for the good of God. But I am sure that our God does not sleep. He does not rest. And somehow he will take these atrocities and use them to the glory of God Almighty. The gospel has this treasure which has transformed the <coughs> power because Jesus Christ came. Jesus Christ died and Jesus Christ arose from the dead. And now he bears our sins and by his stripes we are healed. Oh, what a good God we serve. Never mind what, God, what, what the, the people around us are doing to this mortal body. One day this mortality will take on immortality and we shall see Jesus face to face. So how do you guard the treasure? First of all, what is the treasure? Do you remember the treasure? The man found treasure in a, in a field, sold everything, and he sold out and came and got that field. He gave his life, perhaps, sold everything he had. The treasure is the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul says, when, we, when he asked Timothy to guard it, he says in verse 14, 2 Timothy verse 14, guard and keep it with the greatest care, the precious and excellently adapted truth which has been entrusted to you by the help of the Holy Spirit who makes his home in us. Remember when Jesus Christ was here? Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all one. Jesus Christ said, when I go back to heaven, I will ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to be with you. To be with you and to be in you. For those of us who have received Jesus Christ by faith, the Holy Spirit, all of God, all of the power of God, is in us. Well, we must understand, first of all, that we, no man, and I say this is a saying, no man, and I'll add woman in brackets, no man or woman is an island <coughs> unto himself or herself. We need the strength of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit within us to keep us and to sustain us and to remind us of whose we are and to whom we belong. We belong to Jesus Christ. You know, uh, college had no guards, no one um, in Nigeria last week. Had no soldiers. They were there like lambs from the slaughter. And those folks, empowered by their demonic forces, went in, killed 50 innocent students, and shot up some others. We do not have to retaliate. We have a God who is bigger than all. We put it in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the power of the Holy Spirit will guard us. The power of the Holy Spirit will defend us and will preserve us. And the power of the Holy Spirit will protect us and protect the gospel, the good news, the treasure, the hidden treasure. With the power of the Holy Spirit in us, we can guard that treasure. And how do we guard it? We guard it by spreading it. You know, salvation, someone once said, is like a hot potato. You drop it in your hand. You can't hold a hot potato in your hand. You know, you keep throwing it up until you throw it to the next person. You've got it. Now you want somebody else to have it. And so you pass on this gospel and good news. Salvation is for everyone who hears, everyone who believes, everyone who receives. 
We're told to go tell it on the mountain. That's what we do with this treasure that we receive. We guard it by giving it away. For I'm saved. I'm going to see Jesus Christ saved. I want you to be saved. I want you to want your family and your friends and your relatives. Everyone in the community and everyone around the world to be saved. That's what the treasure is all about. We guard the treasure. We guard the gospel by living it. How do we pass it on? We live it. We walk the walk. We talk the talk. Others see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. My friends, let us love the Lord our God with all our hearts and minds our strength. And the second commandment that Jesus gave is just like that, that we love our neighbor as ourselves. That way we will guard the treasure. Jesus Christ passed on to Paul, and Paul passed on to Timothy. And Timothy, through his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice, they passed it on to others, and so eventually it's passed on to us. My friends, I encourage you, let us guard treasure. Let us now stand and repeat the Apostles' Creed, in 8.81, right at the back of the hymnal, in 8.81, 8.81, right at the back, the Apostles' Creed.
this offering we use to the glory of God. Now please be seated and turn to page 12 in the hymnal. Page 12.
saints of God, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take, eat, feed on him by faith in your hearts by thanksgiving. Let us commune. Savior Jesus Christ broke before you. Let us commune together. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you. Let us commune together.
you go back to your uh, seats, let us uh, repeat the World Communion Sunday prayer again.
we ask in Jesus' name, and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.